You are listening to the Lawyer Stories Podcast with host Benny Gold. Lawyer Stories was founded in July 2017 and is an expanding global network of lawyers and law students sharing their personal journeys to the noble profession of the practice of law. Join us on this podcast as we dig deeper into these stories and hear from lawyers and law students from around the world in all areas of the legal profession. Here at Lawyer Stories, we believe that every lawyer has a story. What's yours? Welcome to the Lawyer Stories podcast with Benny Gold. Uh, Today we welcome in Sam Molayi. How are you, sir? Very good. Fantastic. Good, good. Sam's uh, the strategic advisor uh, at Legal Funnel in LA, based out of LA, although it's all virtual. So... Mm -hmm. Happy to have you. Um, what what's going on there uh, in LA? What, what can you tell us? What's good? Everything's good. Everything's good. Thank God. I mean, pretty much living in the virtual world more than the physical world. So, <laughs> you know, doesn't it feel like that? Even like with even with um, you know, just with lawyer stories and like Instagram and all like the the different platforms we have, it just feels like we live in this like virtual world. Like half the people we know are like virtual now, right? Yeah, yeah, it just makes more sense, more scalable, be able to do more um, in a more scalable way. Uh, we'll talk about that. So yeah, yeah, no, we'll definitely talk about that. I see you like all over, like a lot of different platforms, like talking about like what you're doing, like automated law firms, and like we're definitely interested in like learning about all that. But so like I just want to start off with the basic. It is lawyer stories. So like just like tell us where you're from and um, like where you grew up. I grew up uh, in uh, Los Angeles. I was I was actually born in Iran, and I came here when I was eight years old. Okay. And I would have a crazy story. Let me just share with uh, with the audience. It's it's kind of sounds like a come something out of a dream. But they used to in Iran, the, they used to line up the kids in first grade, and they would make everybody chant "Death to America, Death to Israel," which is a crazy, oh <laughs> you goodness. know, a very dramatic thing to say, to kind of share. But um, at the time, I had no idea what America was, and I knew what Israel was because I'm Jewish. And lo and behold, like uh, my family basically decided to finally leave Iran because of uh, religious discrimination and you know religious freedom. I came to the beautiful country of America, and been thank God very successful and surrounded by a lot of success. Um, but just the irony of coming here and realizing, you know, what's going on in other parts of the world, and we just have to be grateful for, for where we are and. You know, yeah. how our life kind of pans out. So how old were you when you came over here, did you say? I was eight years old. Eight um, years so old. I went, oh. Yeah, I went to first grade there. I have a lot of nice. you know, memories, but uh, I at least have something to compare to. You know, everything is yeah. always sweeter when you have something so dramatic like that. Wow. But, well, Shana Tova to you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, welcome. You're welcome. So like, like, when did you know you wanted to go to law school, like growing up in the, the USA, being here since eight years old? Essentially, it was just being surrounded by my friends who were going to law school okay. and and kind of peer pressured in uh, into law school. And then, really? yeah, <laughs> peer pressured in. And but I was always a little bit more business friendly. I would always make small businesses and be a little bit more entrepreneur. So I, I was able to kind of take that energy and apply it to the legal field. OK, I see. So like I saw that you studied like one year at Elon University in Tel Aviv. Like what was that like? That experience and it was it was a study abroad trip for uh, a month, not too long, but it was amazing uh, being able to go to another country, to the beautiful uh, country of, uh, of of Israel, uh, be able to see their culture and be able to live it. It was amazing, life changing. Yeah. yeah, no, I bet. Um, so we actually first, uh, well, well, let me ask you this first. Like, what, out of law school, like we're just gonna move through this, but like out of law school, what was your first job like? Out of law school, do you remember that? Yeah, I worked for an employment law firm, which kind of exposed me to the whole pre-lit and litigation kind of side of things. And I quickly, it didn't really take me long, even while I was in law school, to realize I'm like, wait, this is law? I'm like, I wish somebody would have like told me uh, before going to law school. Um, so, I, you know, before, uh, so I took the bar exam, waiting for my bar results, and I was having doubts. I'm like, is this really what I really want to do yeah. for the rest of my life? And that's when I started soul searching, talking to people. Um and I realized then, no, I need to kind of go on the business side of things. So let me go create my own law firm instead. And that's when I basically created my own law firm about seven years ago, about a couple of months after I passed the bar. And I had no idea how to do anything at all. I, and I basically had to teach myself how to get clients. And more, most importantly, how to serve the clients 
And, you know, after that, I basically had to figure out how to not be the business operator. Um, and I basically self, uh, self-taught myself everything and been able to apply as fast as I could learn. And, you know, thankfully it's uh, proven pretty fruitful since then. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So we actually featured you, uh, back January 20th, maybe it's 28th. I can't read my old handwriting in my notes. So, um, <laughs> 2020, so a little over a year ago. Um, and you, you first stated like when you opened up, like right away, like your lawyer story shot into, um, like your business, like you're definitely like an entrepreneur, like, but you know, by heart. And so like it said, uh, you, you start, you first stated when you read com secrets, the underground playbook, uh, for grooming your company online and open your eyes to possibilities. Um, so like, tell us about that. This is a book that teaches you how to get clients or customers for anything you ever want to sell online. Wow. It's basically like the backbone structure, the system, the methodology of how to get people who need you. Um, let's say, you know, for me, I, I was able to apply in the legal field. So there's people who have problems, have issues, they need you. How do you get them to actually get signed up? And the funnel system is kind of the foundation behind that. So I was able to kind of, once I kind of got exposed to this about five or six years ago, it blew my mind. I'm like, this is it. This is exactly right. how you do it. So I'm like, I have to be able to learn how to do this to generate clients from a law firm. And I was able right. to quickly apply those things over and over, learn a lot, apply across multiple law firms, started doing for other lawyers, started now teaching about it, and then started um, you know, being involved with at this point, 20, 30 different law firms that I'm able to create these funnels for that are basically bringing in the leads um, and then using automation to be able to sign up the clients and serve the clients and then get reviews and repeat over and over and over in a very repeatable, teachable, learnable system that anybody could pick wow. up on. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So that's basically my mission now because I see this, I have this light bulb the last couple of years of having this light bulb this is it this is it this is where it's going this is where the law you know if you're solo or like a small law firm this is where it's going if you you know obviously we can't depend on the physical world to get clients you know you can't just set up an office and just expect people to come to you so the only way in 2021 and beyond you get clients is online you know so this is it this is, and then this funnel system is the only way to get to get clients so more or less you know the market hasn't really caught on to it i would say now i would say Two to five percent of the of the, mar- of the legal market as you know applies these concepts, but more and more law firms will understand these things and apply for themselves. Um, uh, let me also share with you, Ben. Um, there's two components of it. You know, most people are interested in either learning how to get clients, which is you know one thing that I teach, and the second part that I've more and more have seen, which I think is even more important, which is how to be able to automate the law firm. So the, the law firm is running on its own. And that's where the beauty right. of this whole thing comes from. Right. Um, so because a lot of lawyers and, you know, both of us are attorneys, we know how hard it is to be able to work all day long, grind it out. Um, you know, we always have doubts, like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this how it's supposed right. to be? You know, so I noticed that as a trend with a lot of other attorneys. And now the, my program is kind of being the... Um, being the front runner of being able to teach lawyers how to free themselves up from their law firm by creating systems, automations, right. automatic follows, and all these things that helps them free them from their law firm. Wow. So, and it all started sort of with that book, like that opened your eyes, like that, that was just sort of, does that book, is that book still relevant? I don't mean to go back to the book. But oh yeah. You say it's still relevant to today. Oh yeah. Very relevant. It's kind of like the Bible of learning how to, you know, generate wow. clients online. So, so like yeah. you, it's called Dotcom Secret Killer. What's that? Say that again. I just wanted to reiterate the name for if anybody wants to read it. It's called Dotcom Secrets. Dotcom Secrets. So, so like you talk a lot about funnels. Like, what exactly is a funnel? The end goal is to get to people who need you. Who need you? They're looking that either they're looking to hire you or they don't realize that they need to hire you. How do you get them signed up? Yep. The the system how how do you do that is called a funnel. Okay. So just a short summary of what it is practically is you always want to capture their contact information first up front. Second mindset is to build relationship with them with videos and emails. And third is you drive them towards your desired action, which for lawyers is either scheduled calls or give me a direct call. 
how so that's the you know that's the concept but how do you go actually building out these pieces is basically what i teach instead of legal funnel how to put those pieces together and be able to run 24 7 without your intervention so that you know once you create it then it's running its course and 24 7 it's basically getting you bookings or calls and then you have people who are helping you sign up these sign up these clients and then there's also a whole automation system for how to serve the clients and make sure that they're happy and then make sure you get your reviews and and you know be able to serve more clients so so like so a couple of questions like how do you how does this work like interjurisdictionally like if you're saying everything's virtual so everybody has their own geographic location where they, they could serve clients okay. so most most people are state based so that's then they go target um those those types of people but there's also some that are federal um these things that you happen to, uh, tend to work better if they're more on the state level and a federal level because they have a bigger market to market to what kind of law what kind of um legal issues are is uh, this dealing with um all types every single type that's the beauty of it because it, okay. again it's it's foundational and kind of frameworks that you apply for your own law firm and your okay. own time um and it's really cool. It's like a, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that you're always constantly solving. So I've been trying to solve this game for six years and I'm still every day. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of those things where it's like the only constant is change. It's also one of those things that gets refined right. and changed over time. So it's kind of keeps you always challenged and motivated to continue. So like, can, you, can you run us through like an example of like getting a case, like how you would acquire a case and like how it works, that sort of thing? Sure. I mean, the typical one, the most common one is somebody searches for something, then it's Google ads. And then that takes you to a funnel or landing page where you capture their contact information or they give you a call. If you capture the contact information, then you want to make sure you have automated emails and texts and videos and things that are being sent to them. And, you know, you basically push them to whatever that desired action is. That's a typical way. There's also a whole way where you can come from Facebook ads right which is which is a lot of people don't really explore and that's also amazing and it's what's amazing about the facebook ads is um you get people who are not necessarily looking to hire you but they need you they either have a certain problem or a certain cause of action that you, that you can address that you can solve for them and you just have to be able to get their attention and and get them basically uh signed up for your, for whatever that is wow okay and this is happening like while you sleep pretty much like people are i mean that's that's probably pretty interesting to like wait because like for me i mean this is totally different but i think it's fun to wake up and i see like all these messages from people around the world just like want to be on the podcast want to have a feature and like that must be incredible for you or it's like automated money yeah it's it's that's like, the word it's very empowering because as you said while you sleep yeah um, it's consistent it's scalable because if, if it works, then you just crank it up um, and, you know, you get as many people as you can in the market. Um, and it's just empowering. It's just very empowering because it's dependent on you're consistently, you're not going to worry about, is, am I going to get business this week? So, you know, it's always bringing you. So okay. what's the deal with the five-star ratings? Like, I feel like, um, I think when we first chatted, you had like 2,600. And then now you're past like 3,000, like five no, star I think at the first, when we talked, we had a couple of hundred or something like that. But that oh, was, no, no, no. that was, that was probably back in the January of 2020. But no. when we were talking about booking the podcast, I think you were at 2,600. Yeah. And then now, like, we're, now, now we're, we're probably up above 3,000, right? No, we're at 2,700, 2,721 okay. five star Google reviews. That's um, amazing. Yeah. And most people don't believe it. And again, this is a small law firm. Um, it's not like it's a very big law firm um, that has this many reviews, but all of that is, is an attest to the funnel. Every single one of those clients came as a result of funnel. So, you know, just for this law firm, about five or 6,000 clients and about a third, actually more than 6,000, because I know about a 30% of my people uh, leave reviews. So yeah, 2,721 Google reviews. That's amazing. So like, what are some of the, pro do you remember any of the issues that you've dealt with, like legal issues in particular with some of these clients or no? Um, what do you mean? Like, what, what are some of the issues, like the legal issues that you've dealt with? Like, because obviously you've done something for them to earn that five-star review, right? Correct. But this particular one is for, I do a transactional legal services for these people. So yeah. Um, it's based on those kind of services. 
Trans okay, so transactional, transactional legal service. Gotcha. All right. Um, so like, what's the number one problem that most of your lawyers are like struggling with, like inside the legal funnel right now? It's it's the, it's the idea that they're too busy and they're working too much okay. and doing a little bit of a lot of things. Yep. So if that sounds like this sounds familiar to you, too busy, working yep. too much or doing a little bit of a lot of things. That's like the number one common denominator I see most lawyers struggling with. And that's because there's some of these days, there's so many things to do. There's, you know, different softwares, there's different people involved, there's taxes, there's accounting, booking, there's so many things that you need, that you need to do in order to run a law firm. However, there are ways to be able to replace yourself with delegation, you know, using people to replace you and right. automation, which is using tools to replace you to take over a lot of those tedious, repetitive, or any kind of tasks that you don't like doing or are not necessarily good at. Right. And I basically okay. teach, teach these things where like, what are the things that you have to do in a law firm? List them out. And I say, hey, this could be automated or this could be delegated. And I'll show you exactly how to get this okay, off sure. your hand by one of those two things. Or sometimes a lot, of the, a lot of people don't realize you could just eliminate it, eliminate whatever you're doing. So, um, so I always look for figuring out exactly what you can hand off to other people or what can you automate using tools or yeah. just completely stop doing no, that's great. I think delegation is amazing. Like what, if you have stuff, you can just delegate and not have to, a lot of people, you know, they want to control everything, but I think if you can let go and, and delegate, I think that's really, uh, that's really important. So like, what would you say to an attorney that comes to you and is like, Hey, I'm interested in getting involved with this. With legal funnel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you guys are a run your own law firms, um, um, I have a program called legal funnel where I teach basically lawyers how to, again, two sides, how to get clients online or, um, and, and, or, um, how to automate the law firm. So the law firm is running on its own. Um, if you're interested in these kinds of topics, all you have to do is just Google legal funnel or go on Facebook or go on Instagram or wherever to search yeah. for legal funnel and be able to, um, learn more about the program and be able to help tell you exactly how we can help you with this. Yeah, Sam's out there. It's very ubiquitous. I've seen it. Uh, I see it everywhere. So, <laughs> so like, you. We also talk about. Um, we talk about delegating. So, like, you you've discussed virtual assistants before, right? So, like, tell me, like, uh, you know, like, how many do you have, and like, what, and like, how do you, how do they help you at your firm? Um, tell us a little bit about that. So I've hired over 200 virtual assistants up to this point, and now I've about a team of 84 across multiple law firms. And, you know, the more and more I get into this and I realize hiring virtual assistants is the, by far the most leverageable, highest ROI business decision you can make for or business action you can make for your, for your law firm. So once I had this epiphany then three or four years ago, where I basically kind of analyzed for all these VAs that I had at the time. And I remember at the time I had about eight or eight or nine VAs. And I wrote down um, exactly what's, what's their name? How much did it cost me for them to have them for the entire year? And then also in my head, I did an analysis of like what that value was um, for having that VA do the things that they did the entire year. And I realized, you know, for this particular VA, I'm spending $6,000 and the value of that is $80,000. This VA, I spent $2,000 and I was able to maximize and make $100,000 off that VA's wow. specialty. So once I saw that, I'm like, realized that, you know, the ROI is, is you know, 1,000X or 2,000X. So I, at that point, I made a promise to myself. I'm like, I'm going to treat VAs like they're free and I'm just going to hire as many as I can and just that doesn't matter what it is, because again, because the ROI is so high, even if you make mistakes where the VAs yeah. are not necessarily that great, overall, in the big picture, grand scheme of things, everything will make sense. And now I literally, <laughs> I try to find any excuse to hire as many VAs as I can. Just today, I was, you know, you know, basically sending out six job proposals and I'll bring them on as, as long as you're decent, come on in, I'll find you a position for, for you. Wow. That's something else. So in, where do they go? Not your personal law firm, there are other... No, there uh, have some law firms that are uh, for me, and then there's some that I kind of work together um, uh, to help them grow. Um, so yeah, any of those positions, I basically figure out exactly what people are good at. Usually, you know, it's a couple of things. One is they either like talking, so that means put them behind the phone, yep. or they like writing. In that case, maybe they can manage your email inbox or do, write 
demand letters or whatever you want them to write. Okay. Or third, they're more creative in marketing. So you put them towards those very specialized marketing tasks. Um, so let's just say, for example, for YouTube, I don't hire one YouTube person. I have one who makes just the, the thumbnails, uh, one person who edits, one person who, uh, who, opt who uploads and optimizes it. For every marketing task, I always make sure to have a specialized person. So instead of having one person who has 30, 40 hours, I try to have three people that have five to 10 hours and they could do very specialized tasks. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Okay. Um... So how can lawyers instantly get like more control over like what they're doing, like what they're running? I think we talked about delegation. I don't, I mean. Yeah. One practical thing is I just a couple of months ago, I did a really, really, really valuable training called how to delegate 95% of the tasks you're currently working on by hiring virtual assistants. Oh. Um, and every time I teach about virtual assistants, the one question I have is, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to give them. I don't, I don't have enough stuff to give them. Yeah. So I realized that if that was the problem, I need to figure out, uh, for lawyers to be able to write down and, and clarify for themselves what are the tasks that they're currently working on. So the first half of this training, by the way, if you go on YouTube and search how to hire virtual assistants to legal funnel, you'll find the, our video on this. The first half of the training is where you write down all the tasks that you're currently working on and it's categorized into four different categories. But there's one type, which is the, your drudgery zone, which is all the staff, all the tasks that you are not necessarily good at and you don't enjoy doing. So what are those things? <laughs> the drudgery zone. So, the okay. drudgery zone. And yeah. there's a disinterest zone, which is stuff that you you know you know how to do, but you just don't necessarily like doing. Okay. And then there and then there's stuff that you're uh, that you're not necessarily good at, but you do because you enjoy it. And that's then ultimately funny. there's the last zone, which is the, the zone that you want to be, and that's where this is where happiness resides, is doing the stuff that you're good at. Okay. You also enjoy doing. So think about that. I'm gonna ask you this question, Ben. Like Out of that. all the things that you do, what is your happy zone? My happy zone? Um, you mean like with my full-time job? With anything that you're doing on a daily basis. Oh, I mean, you know, I do like uh working with with people, with my staff. I do like doing that. That's sort of like it that you know gives me energy, like being with with people, that sort of thing. So imagine you do that only and you do it on a higher level where you even have more people involved and you have structure behind it, these teams and things that you do and you walk in, you manage, you talk and you step out and you let everything else be handled by so everyone. So like somebody, okay, and then somebody's there doing like my emails, somebody's answering the phones. Yes. So put in a very specific way, like it's not one person doing the emails and phones. It's one person for each of those tasks. Yes. So or, multiple, or multiple doing those tasks. So and you're really long, breaking down like the elements of like everything you do and then dishing them out to everybody. Correct. Dishing them out or using, there's a lot, a lot of tools that will, that will get these things off your hands. Um, wait, so wait, what, what was the number four? What was it called? Like the, the happy zone? The happy um, I forgot the name of it. Um, I could I have to pull it out, but essentially it's the happy zone. That's where the success zone is. You know, the happy zone. most okay. lawyers, it doesn't matter. The making money is not really the goal right because you realize once you make you know even if you make as much money you make you know it doesn't necessarily make your life any better necessarily right. so but it's actually success in running a successful law firm is i realized working in the happy zone so that's where now i do yeah. my I, I tie my happiness to that as long as i'm doing that i'm happy i'm successful if i'm not doing that then i'm doing something wrong and i need to get myself back to that so now my entire focus is trying to get myself in only in that zone i think that's so important though like what you're saying what you're talking about like in terms of uh time management i mean you should really so i don't i'm trying to remember like when we took like the lsat and all that were they telling us to focus on like the things we're really good at or were they saying like focus on the stuff that you're weak at i don't remember because I know like they hear a lot of the times I'm here now, like focus on everything that you're good at and like just forget about the stuff that you're you're not so good at. They, 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 they will tell you to work on the stuff that you're weak at, which is not okay. necessarily how the real world works. Uh, right. The real world, the better, more refined version is, uh, you know, do the things that you're good at that you also enjoy doing. Right. And that's, right. And that's the only way you'll be, it'll be sustainable for you. And that's the only way you'll, you'll bring the most value to the world because, you know, you'll want to do it and you'll be good at it. So right. ideally in an ideal world, we want everybody to be in that zone. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so like, how are you, do you have students? Like how many students do you have right now? And like, how are they doing in your program? Um, so I was able to kind of create my own structure for if I had to, 
I have all this knowledge about, you know, very practical knowledge of how to run a virtual automated and scalable online law firm. I was able to kind of package that all together and put into a six module course where I very, very systematically teach you exactly, again, two components, how to get clients and two, which is, you know, my favorite topic is be able to how to automate the entire thing from bringing in the clients to serving the clients to be able to finish off the clients and rinse and repeat over and over. Um, so yeah, the, the program is called Legal Funnel Mastery. And uh, now I'm actually, I could share, this is my first time ever sharing this. I'm actually have a bigger vision where I'm going to be building out a platform for um, not just you know, beyond me teaching my stuff, but also bringing in other instructors, other attorneys, other experts who will be able to help lawyers um, run their law firm like the best version that they possibly oh. could. So that's the big, bigger vision that I'm currently building out. I'm in the works right now with that. Um, so it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But basically, that's my mission to help as many lawyers as I can make sure that they're working their desired happy zone um, and um, do it positively with good energy. And get assistance to do everything you don't want to do. If, it's, <laughs> if you get something you don't want to do, send it to the assistant. I mean, exactly. Yeah, that's good. All right. And then the assistants will be doing different tasks. Okay. Yep. Um, so, I, you know, I was kind of curious, like, are, have you seen any programs out there like this? There are, there are some, there's a lot, um, there are a couple that kind of focus on the getting clients aspect part. However, I realized, you know, these programs, it's very, theory is very different from practicality. So, you know, yes, there's all this information about how to go get, get, get clients. But I think what's different from mine is I'm actually, at first I go apply it for myself in a very practical level. And then I, and then I go and share exactly what's working exceptionally well for me. So it's not based on theory at all. And it's not based on anything that I'm had done in the past, but with things change so fast that, you know, something happened three, six months ago. Like you need to prove to me that it's working this month or else I don't believe you. So, you know, these are all things that I'm currently doing right now. Again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a practical practitioner of running multiple law firms and I'm able to pass everything that I'm learning this week and pass it on to you. Um, and I'm able to, you know, save many, many years for so many of our students, all this trouble of, you know, different, you know, hiring people and using all these tools. I'm able to just say, hey, this is the best thing for it. Go for it because I've done it myself here. So, uh, so you, you can do it too. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, you're getting people business through a funnel. You're teaching them how to handle all the business coming in by basically delegating and hiring virtual assistants. That's wow. That's pretty, uh, that's a pretty amazing model, I would say. Um, so, congrats. And, and you're using, but I think like the background of it is like, you're using a lot of like, are you using like a lot of Google ads and that sort of thing, like people landing on like the, so I think that's sort of like the, what do you call it? Like the, uh, the trick to it, like the. It's, it's what, uh, that's where it starts the funnel, but there's a whole, there's a whole system behind on the back end. you know, that's the source. Google right. ads and Facebook ads and YouTube ads and all this other stuff, but you also need to be able to convert those people, those leads into clients, right. which is the half of the challenge. And then, and now you have the, okay, great. You have 30 clients signed up. How are you going to ser serve them? I hope you're not going to be the right. one doing the work. So, you know, so that's the second aspect of it. Right. Okay. That's, that's interesting. I, I like that. I mean, it's really, I guess I'm curious, like what kind of law, like I know I asked this earlier, but are they doing, you said transactional all types all types you criminal all lawyers types. coming in you got trust the states lawyers and it's virtual so it's it's the jurisdiction like people are coming through the, the jurisdiction because they're searching it in their area right correct it's it's again i'm teaching framework setting so you just have to be able to um, apply for yourself and i'm also very conscious of exactly i know what practice types that people are in so when i know very specific things about certain niches that I also address. Hey, okay. for personal injury, make sure you do this and not this. For estate planning, you better do this. Right. Um, I'll point all that out. And which again, it took me many, many years to figure all these things yeah. out. And also being able to run this program, I talked to so many lawyers, so many students, so many things, what's working, what's not, that, 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 that. And I'm able to you know, put that in my head and know exactly yeah. 30. At this point, I know everything by cost per lead and cost acquisitions for every niche. And I know what's working, what's not, because I get so much of that feedback that yeah. I'm able to pass that off to our students. Um, it's, a, it's, it's cool. Um, I'm all about giving and 
and be able to help other people. I, I never see a success like me being successful. Like that, that, like actually, um, a couple of times I had to go to Vegas and, you know, I basically go, I went on these trips essentially by myself. And I realized like, I'm not happy. It doesn't matter how amazing this beautiful suite is. I'm right. not happy if I do it, enjoy by myself. So that's, you know, yeah, that shows sure. me, like pure happiness is when you share with others. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, that, well, I think that's huge, actually, Sam. I think you got to. I think you should lead with that sometimes. Pure happiness is where when you share with others. <laughs> um, no, because I think like that's what you do. You're teaching people how to find their happiness through their profession and kind of like get through the stuff that they don't really want to do. I think that's like super important. Um, so tell us about those those gold records in the background. <laughs> so these are ClickFunnels. Uh, they're called Two Comma Club Awards. They are awarded to anybody who generates a million dollars with funnels. Um, I was able to receive one in 2019, 2020, 2021, and actually just just earned my fourth one after apply for it. Basically, these are four different, um, well, three of them are, are law firms, three law firms that I've been able to go from, from zero from scratch to a million dollars in revenue uh, on average within a year and a half or so for each law firm. And now I'm able to, again, pass all, pass that on to our students. And now after, you know, once I receive mine, which I already have, I'm, I'm good. Um, now my focus is getting our students their own plaques. Um, again, once you have this, again, it's a proven proven system. Like if I had one, yeah. even one, actually, even if you have one, it's actually proven because at that point you had to serve, you know, hundreds and thousands of clients for you to be able to, you know, receive one, but let alone three or four. You know, there's, you know, there's method to demand this. It didn't happen by chance. And that's what I try to teach. Wow, that's amazing. So where do you see this in like five to 10 years? Hopefully being the masterclass of the legal um, of the legal market, teaching yeah. and empowering other lawyers to grow their own uh, automated virtual law firm. And I, I do think it's the best business model for a law firm. Uh, virtual, you have to serve clients from your laptop and you know from wherever, not tied, not tied to a nine to five schedule. Um, right. It's automated, so it's running on its own. And third, it's scalable, which means that it's able to grow more without necessarily you doing doing more. So that's the, you know that's like a, you know perfect place where you want to be, a perfect business model for a law firm. So that's you know trying to now pass it on to other people. Well, Laura's stories would love to help you in any way we can. So I'm glad you know we got a chance to to chat and hang out tonight. Is there anything like we missed that we, you'd like to share with everybody? Yeah, I just want to give people um, confidence. A lot of you are so lost these days because they're so inundated with so much information that's out there. Obviously, free information, but YouTube, Facebook groups. You know, I'm, I'm sure everybody goes on their Facebook uh, and then they see a lawyer posting in a lawyer in a lawyer Facebook group. Hey, what do you guys think about this one? And then, you know, there's a hundred, you know a lot of comments, and then they get distracted. They go try to try try that out. Then they go try that out. You want to cut that noise instead and go follow one or two people that you really, that you look up to and get hyper-focused. Hyper-focus is, is key, I think, when it comes to being successful in 2021 and beyond. Um, I'm working on this myself. You know, I have a lot of things going on too, so I'm trying to get myself hyper-focused. And but at the same time, I try to do that to our students. So cut the noise. Don't get distracted. Avoid shiny objects and drum. Avoid new things. A lot of people, just because something new comes out, you got to let it simmer for a couple of months to see whether it actually pans out to anything. Right. So as my, as my mentor taught me, he's like, park your ideas, park your things that you want to try out. So anytime I see a new tool that's like so cool, I don't buy it right away. I have a rule of thumb. I just put it into my to-do list and I save it and I check on it maybe in a week or two. But like, do I still really want it? Right. Right. <laughs> right. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, whatever. If you see a shiny shiny pamphlet let it be right let it be or park it that's the best way to kind of think of it about just park, park it. it park it yeah <laughs> like that so well so uh how could everybody get in touch with you i know it's uh you know you're out there so you just have to search you just have to search legal funnel anywhere on google facebook anywhere okay. or search my name sam i um i try to have a way i can i try to get as much value out to the market as much as, as much as I possibly can. Feel free to reach out to talk to one of our legal fund advisors. They'll tell you more about the program. Again, this is life changing. And I always, yeah. I think of it like as like the first couple of steps that opens up this whole world of where you'll be heading for many, many years after that. So I hope to be that first step, step stone for you, for a lot of your listeners and I'm here for you guys. That's awesome. Um, 
Samuel Malay. Malay. <laughs> I'll t- I'll let you say it one other way so I could just laugh. That's just funny. I don't care. It's Sam Malay. Malay. Sam Malay. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you so, so much for having me. Ben, I wanted to give you props for being so consistent with everything you've been doing. I've been seeing you, you know, do this and Thanks. be uh, doing so consistently. That's really rare in anything. So props to you and may you reach your 500 episode and your 1000th episode. And thank I want to you see, you, see your success and your growth. Oh, I appreciate that a lot, Sam. Thanks so much. Stay right there, uh, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, check it out. It'll be posted. Obviously, you're probably watching it right now. Uh, wherever you are in the world today, enjoy yourselves. Cheers.